Welcome back everybody, I am your host Stone Up the Hero Type and this is another episode of How To RP1 and we're going to be doing a little bit of a special episode because I've been asked about this so many times and we're going to be using this guy, this magnificent rocket, the first thing we ever built on this series. And quite frankly, the whole reason I started making this series to begin with. There's going to be a little bit more to it than that because we're going to be doing the 3k down range today, but this is going to be very important to that process. And before I forget, feel free to give this a like if you're enjoying the content and you can always subscribe if you want to see more. I do have another series going on as well. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk tech. On to the R&D, let's go. So before the update, you can actually do this with the first two tech nodes, but because you have to have a controlled base rocket, it weighs too much. So you need the following three things, material science, and then you need the second rocketry tab, this one right here. And mostly we need it because we need the AJ-10 variant of the Aero B and having the RD-102 will be helpful, but it's not actually necessary. Now I say three things because you have to unlock the first rocketry tab first, and you could actually do this with the XLR-43 engine if you don't want to use the RD series. It's a similar build. In fact, if you just kind of resize the tanks and follow everything else, it should work as long as you're over the 6,000 meters a second, which is something we're going to get into a little bit later. Now, having an upgraded avionics core will help, but you do not need it. I purely bring this up because someone may be watching this video that already has more than enough unlocked and they're struggling with it, which is why they're here. So you don't have to downgrade it. You can use the upgraded things. It will be the same effect. But with all of that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and go to mission control and talk about the contracts. And I want to talk about a few things about them just so everyone is on the same page. So let's go do that now. So we're going to start zoomed in. So I want you guys to be able to see this easily. Basically, the big thing I want to point out is you have to control the rocket for at least 50 seconds. The rocket we're going to build is like 63 seconds of burn time. So that's totally covered. But we're actually going to be spin stabilizing this rocket. And there's a few reasons for that. There are ways to do it by controlling the first stage and then spinning the second stage. But that's kind of a hard thing to time and it costs a lot of money and this is a beginner's guide so I'm going to show you the easiest way to get past this contract. And the last thing I want to talk about is the advanced fee. It's 34,000 ish and I want to be able to build this rocket for less than that so we can maximize income and gains. That way we can still spend more money on our KSC. So we're going to accept this contract, but I'm also going to accept a biological uh, sample contract purely because I don't have all the tech unlocked as of now. And the next thing I have building is my biological rocket. So I'm going to grab that contract as well. So we have some more funding to play around with. Now, when we go over to the KSC, see here in just a second it might look a little weird to you if you have not watched the short i should be releasing before this but it was a short on contract management so you'll see a bunch of rockets in my queue don't worry about that that won't affect the 3k downrange thing i'm just letting you know if you still need to research tech and you have a rocket almost built grab that contract as well because the 3k downrange is actually a milestone contract so you can have that and a sounding rocket contract at the same time unless you're doing an x-plane then you can have the 3k and the x-plane but I'm rambling, let's go over to the KSC now. So the next bit of tech we're gonna unlock is gonna be the last bit of tech we need to build this rocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and just warp through it. But first I'm gonna buy a couple upgrade points to speed the process along because it I have the money for it. So I'm just going to use some post production and speed through this and we're going to go ahead and warp through and get this unlocked and then we're going to go ahead and hop over to the VAB and get started building on our rocket. Now, for those of you who do not know me, I am notoriously lazy, so we're going to make a sub-assembly out of this downrange rocket we have built prior, simply by clicking up at the top left tab, opening up sub-assemblies, and just dragging the whole rocket over. You don't have to do this, but it makes it a lot easier, because we're going to be using this as our first stage and the arrow be as our second stage, so it's simply... It's, it's just a lot easier to actually make a sub-assembly, open up the Airby rocket, design it, and then drag this back in and attach it to the bottom, rather than trying to rebuild it from scratch. But if you really just want to build this from scratch, that's totally fine. This is just how I do it, because once again, I am notoriously lazy when it comes to building things. But with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and do the main part of the build, where we design the Airby rocket, and then attach this bad boy to it, make a couple of quick adjustments, and send it. So because I like to build off old designs, we're going to open up that Araby rocket. We're going to get rid of the Tiny Tim booster and we're going to make this a bit bigger and change the engine. So the place I like to start is I'm going to put the 3.8 diameter Araby core rather than the 3.0. Purely because you have to make the rocket way too long at 0.3 meters for the AJ-10 variant we're going to be using. 
So typically just change the root, put the three point in on there, and then we're gonna widen the tank and widen the nose cone. This will cost some tooling, but it's under four grand altogether. The other change I recommend you do is making this a high pressure aluminum tank because the tooling cost is, well, the difference in tooling cost is pretty much non-existent. So go ahead and upgrade that tank. That way you have a lighter tank and you get more Delta V out of it. You wanna overbuild this as much as you possibly can because you're not going to get the full re-entry because the rocket's going to get destroyed as it tries to come back down through the atmosphere. So the best way to do this is hit the 3,000 kilometers before you come back through that 140 mark, which this rocket can more than easily do. We're going to click on engine. We're going to spend the three grand and upgrade it to the AJ-10 variants. We're going to switch the fuel out. We're going to make this 0.38 by about 4.1 meters. 3.8 by 4 will work. I like to give it a little extra because I want to get that full 52 seconds of burn time. Now the end goal is you want to have over 6,000 meters a second. I like to use Kerbal Engineer or MechJeb to test that because sometimes the stock one doesn't always work correctly which is why I have it pulled up the way I have it pulled up. After we stretch this tank out a little bit, we're gonna go to the sub-assemblies and we're gonna grab our downrange rocket. We're gonna attach it to the bottom. Notice how I left a decoupler on there. Now there's a few tips and tricks I'm gonna go over with you when we do this because there are, how do I put this? There, there are different ways you can set all this up. I have a preferred way, but if your rocket's a little bit different than mine, your wings are different, you may have to like keep some sounding payload in to balance the rocket and adjust the col and the com but we're gonna go ahead and get to that once we get this attached and get this changed over so one of the first things i'm going to do is i'm going to actually widen the tip of this top tank because i want it to match up to the decoupler you don't actually have to do that it just looks tacky to me if you don't and because the change isn't that dramatic we don't actually have to tool it now another thing i wanted to point out real quick just for future reference you can now use high pressure aluminum tanks to put sounding payload in these rockets that's part of the update that i missed i just wanted to say that now because i did say it was only high pressure steel i have been corrected i'm showing you guys right now that you can actually do it with the high pressure aluminum tanks which we don't actually use i just filmed that little part so i can show you that so i can correct myself from a previous mistake but with that cleared up let's keep going i just wanted to show you that you don't have to have the sounding payload in the rocket if you don't want to but it may help depending on where your center of lift is in fact, I'm going to go ahead and check mine real fast just to make sure that everything will still remain stable. Now, you could technically do this by maxing out the burn time for the RD-101, but I'm going to want the RD-102 anyways, so I might as well upgrade it. We're going to go ahead and bring this up a little bit so I can stretch out the tank, update the engine, and try to give myself a little over uh, 6,200 meters a second of total delta V, which again, I'm using the Kerbal Engineer screen to verify that. So we're going to spend the $4,500 real fast. We're going to buy it because it is a slightly better engine you get more thrust and a better isp and then we're gonna go ahead and adjust the tank to give us the delta v we need while still keeping our center of lift and center of mass set up in a way that the rocket will remain stable i'm just doing some quick checks to make sure everything is how i want it making sure the tooling cost isn't too astronomical and we need to adjust our avionics which because we're going to be so close we won't actually have to retool it which is super nice so you may have to retool yours, but it shouldn't be too much money, so don't really worry about it. Now that we have all this set up, we need to make our wings a spin stabilized setup. We're basically going to do the same thing we did with the last spin stability. I'm going to use that blue line to line the wing up. I'm going to turn off snap, use the rotate tool, and slightly tilt it one direction. It doesn't really matter which direction. Either way works, I just prefer to go right. Now... The other thing I want to mention real fast is you don't want to change the wings on the aero B. Those are just going to give it some glide stability, but you don't have to actually tilt those. It could cause some weird issues to happen. Now, once I'm happy with my wing setup, I'm going to offset them back to that 45 degree mark like mine are so I don't catch the launch clamp. And I'm going to speed this up because I'm going to kind of faff around for a minute, just kind of looking at my center of lift and center of mass. And here in a second, my game actually crashes, which you'll see about here. Now, the next thing I need to do, for some reason when I reloaded it, my avionics was all of a sudden insufficient, so I'm going to change those once again to make sure I have sufficient avionics because you have to have control from the start of the launch. So it's very important your avionics are sufficient at the beginning of the launch and there's no room for error. Now my next step is I'm removing the decoupler and the parachute because just we don't need them and they're extra weight. It's not a lot, but all the difference is going to be helpful. Now I'm going to kind of speed through this next little bit because I was just double checking everything, but we need to add a launch clamp to this and give it a tilt because again we are using spin stability. You may need to do a couple of launches to get it lined up, but I'm going to go over two simulations with you. The first I'm deeming, uh, how do I put this, uh, task failed successfully because it does work, but it doesn't work great. And then we're going to do another simulation. I'm going to kind of show you what you're looking out for. 
So we're gonna start with a real basic tilt and then we're gonna launch this rocket in a simulation. And I'm gonna kind of show you some of the things I do to get it to work better, as well as a few things that you wanna try to avoid. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here we are on the launch pad and I'm gonna actually use SAS to force it to turn prograde a little earlier just to kind of get it lined up in the prograde marker before the spin really starts. So as soon as I launch it and let the clamp go, I'm gonna immediately lock it to prograde and I'm gonna show you what happens if you hold this too long. Because if you're going too fast to the lower parts of the atmosphere, bad things happen and you'll see that in just a second and for time constraint reasons i'm going to be speeding through a lot of this launch but i wanted to kind of show you what i mean by tilting too much because friction from the atmosphere is going to overheat some things and you're going to see it here in just a second when there's a big explosion which oddly enough this rocket still manages to work so i staged the rocket right when i was like the last second on the rd 102 stage and what you saw blow up was pretty much two of the wings and the decoupler so nothing essential got destroyed so i figured i'd see how well this launch did but in a real flight this could be disastrous and cause it to fail which is why i wanted to show you this because you want to avoid this a good rule of thumb is when you get to that separation you want to be a little over the 45 degree angle on the nav ball it doesn't have to be perfect but that's usually a pretty good area to aim for to do these downrange contracts especially since we're not doing an actual gravity turn now we're gonna go ahead and fly towards the end of this i want to show you that this actually does hit the 3k downrange and complete the contract even though i did this to show you that it wasn't going to work we did overbuild a little bit so this was more me just getting lucky uh, once that contract flips over, we're going to cut back over to the launch pad. I'm going to kind of show you what I like to do when doing this contract. So like the first flight, we're going to start by locking SAS and going into prograde, but I'm going to pull it off a lot sooner. Um, I like to aim for about 10 to 15 degrees before I let it go, because once you get the spin going, you, you need to let the SAS off because it can't actually affect the spin. Or if you want to, you can simply just keep adjusting the starting angle until it kind of does what you want it to and you don't have to control it at all. I just prefer to do it this way because you get a little bit more control over it. Now we're gonna start speeding the footage up again because we've kind of already seen this, but I want you to watch very carefully to my speed and my altitude. I feel like I've said this before, but if you notice, I'm under a thousand meters a second until I get to about 15 kilometers above the surface. That is a good aim because it's just the right angle to keep you out of the extreme drag losses. And by the time you start getting a little higher, you won't have to worry about heat as much. We do get a little toasty on this launch and there is the decoupler that blows up which is pretty common when you hot stage honestly but for the most part we had a pretty good launch you notice that i kind of have that half circle going on when i pull up the map screen and we're just kind of let this thing kind of coast until it gets up to the 3000 kilometer range um again you'll probably have to play with this a little bit do a couple of launches before you get it right uh, there's not really a right way or wrong way to do it as long as your angle is good enough to actually get you down range far enough everything else is pretty much preference but this is a really easy to build rocket to get you through this contract which i know a lot of people struggle on and actually quit playing ro because of that which is mostly why i'm doing the series but at this point we're pretty much done so we're gonna go ahead and watch this rocket blow up i want to thank you guys again for stopping by i hope you enjoyed the video i may do one other short about going through the contracts maybe do a little bit of a montage as i kind of show you how to to build your ksc up to get ready for orbital launches and then the next main episode will be going orbital or i may just make a really long episode about building up and doing your first orbital launch i haven't quite decided yet if you guys have any opinions on that feel free to let me know in the comments but again at that point i want to thank you guys again for stopping by feel free to ask me questions in the discord and i hope i see you guys next time in another episode of how to rp1